Got one. Is that a bass? Good bass. You got that net? Look at him. Oh my God, Ted. Oh my God. That's a teener. Yeah, I know. We're talking big sticks, gnarly, tangled roots, wrecking ball weights, busting through, buried deep, creature baits, lockdown drag, heavy braid, heavy cover, go in and get them, big bad bucket mouth bass. Woo, it's flipping time, baby. That's right, folks. It doesn't matter what corner of the country you come from. If you got heavy cover, you got heavy bass buried inside of it. And if you want adrenaline pumping action, you gotta go in and get them. And there is no technique that consistently produces more trophy bass than flipping big weights and creature baits. So break out the big gear. It's heavy braid, off-road, four-wheel drive fishing. We're flipping heavy cover today on Captain's Corner. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. In that slop. Yeah! Look who got a flipping bass. There it is. Yes. Flipping bass. I want Oh, baby. Come on, stay on. Giant. We got a pig. We got a pig. Big one. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Let's go on. Yep. Oh, God. Giant. Oh, my God. Guys, we just caught a giant. An absolute giant. The biggest fish. Oh, oh my God. You know, Flipping is a technique that's been around for ages, and it's actually evolved over time. But the basic core principles behind this technique, they're always gonna remain the same. When you got heavy cover, thick brush, gnarly tangled laydowns, dense floating mats, even thick patches of grass, those areas that you dare not approach with your conventional lures or even your lighter gear, there is truly only one good way to fish those areas. It's close quarter fishing that requires both precision and power. But if you're willing to get in there and get dirty and learn how to flip and punch that heavy cover, you're gonna greatly improve your chances of catching more bass and most definitely bigger bass. All that heavy cover is the perfect hunting ground for the king of ambush, the largemouth bass. And because most anglers just pass by that area, maybe touching the outside edges of it, those big smart bass They've learned it's not only a great hunting ground, it's also safety. Yeah, they've learned that it's safe to be buried way up deep inside of there. But if you can learn how to effectively get your baits in there too, hold on, because it can be a wild ride. I want oh, oh guys, I think we got a good one. It's a good fish. Oh, baby. Come on, stay on. Stay on. Oh, there he is. All right. Yes. Yes. Back in the... Oh, baby. Giant. We got a pig. We got a pig. We got a pig. We got a pig. Woo-hoo-hoo-hoo-hoo. <laughs> yeah, buddy. Get him in there. There it is. We got a slob. Flipping slob. That's what this is all about. Oh, look at that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right there. That's why you flip in the heavy stuff. Yes. Woo. Good four and a half to five pound bass. Yeah, that is awesome right there. Awesome. Guys, that right there is why you flip baits into heavy cover. Those big girls, they're laying deep, buried up in there, ready to munch. Absolutely gorgeous. Thank you, Bertha. There she go. Woo. That's awesome. The term flipping actually refers to the casting technique. Rather than that overhand cast or even a sidearm cast, flipping is an underhanded cast at close range that really focuses in on precision and accuracy. It's an incredibly effective form of casting that allows you to quickly and efficiently pick apart cover by targeting your baits into very small, tight holes and pockets. The goal is to get your baits to penetrate that heavy cover, quietly slip through to where those big bass are waiting to ambush their next meal. In past, this technique was actually broken down into two different methods, flipping and pitching. Flipping is a technique where you already have a predetermined length of line release. And using the opposite hand, you guide that bait through, pulling it through the guides and dropping it into precise cover at very close range. 
pitching is much more of an underhanded swing where you use the weight of the lure as momentum to pull the line off of the spool aiming at targets a bit farther away then you would physically have to reel that line back up and aim for your next target the advantage to the old style of flipping was that it was much quieter and your baits landed much softer into those targets. But the disadvantage is you had to be much closer to your targets. And it does require more effort and coordination, believe me. Today, most anglers have evolved to just simply pitching their baits. And the whole idea and concept behind it all is simply referred to as flipping. There are literally hundreds of styles of baits and dozens of scenarios where you could utilize the technique of flipping. But today we're talking about heavy cover, heavy weights, and creature baits. Flipping heavy cover is responsible for some of the biggest bass I have ever seen. And I gotta warn you, once you've experienced a good flipping bite, it can be highly addictive. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Oh yeah! Oh yeah, buddy! In that slop! Yeah! <laughs> Look who got a flipping bass! Yeah, he was deep up in it. There it is. Flipping, baby. Biggest one yet? Biggest fish today. Still not a giant, but yeah, he was way back in that stuff. There it is. Flipping heavy cover isn't for the faint of heart, and it's not for your light tackle. When you're talking about the gear required to flip heavy cover, we're talking big guns, meat sticks, the heavyweights of your arsenal. Let's face it, not only could you be targeting giant bass, you're targeting them in the thickest of cover. You're gonna need that power and strength of your heavy equipment to be able to get those big bass, and sometimes a lot of that grass out of there too. Cast King offers several models of flipping sticks, from the Speed Demon Bass to the Speed Demon Pro Series. Each one has a technique specific rod designed just for heavy cover flipping. A good flipping rod is either a heavy or an extra heavy rod. It has to have a very strong, good backbone. And another thing I look for is a short handle. Make sure the handle is no longer than your forearm. You're gonna require that when you're actually flipping so it doesn't catch on to your arm. A good flipping rod has a very sensitive tip though, and a fast or extra fast tip. A lot of times the bites you experience while you're flipping heavy cover are very minimal. You have to be able to feel that tiny little tick. Those baits are dropping in front of the mouth and they're just sucking it up. It's just a little tick and dump a lot of times that you're feeling for. So a very good, sensitive, extra fast tip is important to me. And I like a rod that's got some decent length. You are gonna be aiming for small, precise targets. It's close quarter fishing. Having a seven foot two, seven foot six, or even up to an eight foot rod is really gonna help you cover a little more distance, but still remain very accurate, very precise, and quiet. When it comes to the reel, you are going to need and want a high speed reel. Minimum seven to one, all the way up to nine to one. I need that speed to be able to get that line back up and pitch back out quickly to cover as much area as I can quickly and quietly. But you also need that speed for when you hook into that giant, you wanna get him out of that heavy cover as fast as possible before he gets the chance to really wrap himself up in there. Cast King offers several reels in this range too. Of course, our most famous reel for that is right there, the Speed Demon Reel. 9.3 to one gear ratio. This thing is a monster when it comes to flipping heavy cover. But whether it's a Speed Demon, a Royal Legend Elite, the brand new Bassinators, or even the Mega Jaw series, anything in a seven to one, eight to one, or nine to one is gonna work well. In my books, go fast or go home. And of course, with the heavy cover, heavy gear, heavy weights, heavy baits, and heavy bass, you need a heavy braid. That's right, I never go flipping heavy cover without a minimum of a 65 pound braid. 65 to 80 pound braid. This is off-road fishing, four-wheel drive fishing, you need to have good tires. When it comes to rigging for flipping baits into heavy cover, no matter how you personally decide to do it, the end goal remains the same, heavy weights, and weedless baits. When it comes to what style of hook to use, a lot of guys like to use a simple wide gap hook, just like that, and they'll Texas rig it. Using a extra wide gap hook like this is a very weedless method, and you're gonna tie it on with a simple Palomar knot or something like that. Other anglers like to use J hooks. 
that are designed for flipping. In fact, when you buy them, they actually call them flipping hooks or heavy cover hooks. They're generally a straight shanked J-shaped hook and they have a little bit of a keeper on them to hold those baits tight. They can be tied on in any fashion, just like anything else. But one method a lot of anglers like to use is by snelling that line on there. Tying a snell knot to that hook, tying a snell knot on there forces the hook to pop up on an angle when pressure is applied. That gives it a much better hook set. At least some anglers feel that way. Either which way, the most important thing is it's got to be a good, strong hook. Make sure whatever hook you choose is a heavy, heavy gauge wire, very thick, very strong, and extra sharp hook. At least a three aught hook, maybe a four aught or even a five aught hook. Flipping heavy cover requires heavy weights. There's no if, ands, or buts about it. You're gonna need weights that are gonna be able to penetrate and pull your bait through some of that thick, nasty, heavy cover. Flipping weights come in a large variety of sizes. Half ounce, three quarters ounce, one ounce, one and a half, one and a quarter, two ounce, they come in a large variety of sizes because there's a large variety of cover out there. Flipping weights also come in several different materials. You could have lead weights, tungsten weights, steel weights, brass weights, there's all sorts of them. Lead weights are definitely the most common that will be found out there. However, lead is not the most environmentally friendly and it's not the heaviest material. Tungsten weights are probably the best option to go with. They're environmentally friendly. The material itself is much denser and heavier than lead, which means the same size weight comes in a much smaller package. That can be pretty important when you're talking about trying to get something to squeeze through really heavy cover. However, lead is, f is much cheaper than tungsten. Tungsten carries a pretty heavy price tag. What size weight? That's gonna depend greatly on what kind of heavy cover you're fishing. And that's where it's gonna require a bit of experimenting on your part. The cover is not the only thing that determines what weight you need to be throwing out there. Your bait and the fall of the bait is also very important. I call this the bait to weight ratio. And this is probably the most confusing part about flipping heavy cover. Obviously a heavier weight is going to sink much faster. When you've got a thin profile out bait that doesn't have a lot of extra appendages, it's going to have a very fast fall on a heavy weight. Big baits with lots of appendages and big flappers are going to create a lot more drag in the water. And a light weight, they're going to have a very slow fall to them. Adjusting the weight to the size of the baits and finding that comfort zone of what the fish want today is the bait to weight ratio. And you're going to want to try and you're going to want to have a variety of baits and a variety of weights to be able to figure out what the sweet spot is today. It may take a little experimenting, but trust me, the fish will tell you what they want. And the last part of the rig is right at the top. And this is an important one. Bobber stops. Put on one, put on two, whatever it takes to make sure you securely hold that weight in place. Make sure you peg that weight with some bobber stops to be able to pull your bait and everything else all the way through that cover. Creature baits. They come in a large variety, which is why I have a box full of just flipping creature baits. This is my heavy cover box, jam-packed full of different baits, because there are so many different scenarios you're going to run into when it comes to flipping heavy cover. They call them creature baits because they're not quite a crawfish, they're not quite a fish, and they're not quite a bug. We're not really sure what they are, so let's just call them a creature. They're creature baits. I, don't want, I honestly don't know what these are imitating all the time. Some of them look a lot like crayfish. Some of them just look like alien creatures. I have no idea. I think that's why they just call, call them all creature baits. But I break my creature baits into three different styles. That helps me decide which ones I'm going to use for which cover. Style number one is the true creature baits. They look like a mixture of some kind of a bug and some kind of a crawfish. They usually have a couple big flappers. They've got a bunch of appendages that are nice, big, and bulky, but make a lot of motion when they're moving through the water. Most creature baits like this also have very, very thick, wide bodies to them. Big bodies and big appendages. Baits like this excel in medium to sparse cover. These big bodies and these appendages tend to be harder to punch through a lot of that thick, 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 thick cover, unless you have an extremely big weight. Baits like this work really well when you're talking root systems, lily pads, lay downs and branches where you've got fairly decent sized holes that you can, that you can drop these into, allowing them to really move and flutter around, but not too much for them to get caught up and, and hung on to sit on. True creature baits are thicker, wider, and they make a bit more noise than anything else. Bait number two the beaver bait. 
This is probably the most common of all the flipping baits out there. There's a wide variety of manufacturers that make a beaver style bait. And what that is, is it's got one big flat tail. Most of the time you can split that tail up so it acts like two different flappers. But for the most part, beaver baits and beaver style baits have one big flat tail there. They don't have as much motion and commotion as the creature baits do, but that profile punches through cover fairly well. Now, they do tend to have a thick body to them still, which is great to hold on to those big, heavy, heavy hooks there, but they don't have a lot of other danglies or appendages to get caught up on any of that heavy cover. Beaver baits or paddle tail baits like this is where I would put into medium to heavy cover. It can get through that fairly heavy cover and there's not a lot of the bait to get caught up. You don't have to use as heavy of a weight to get them to go through. That's number two, beaver baits. And number three is your crawfish style baits. The crawfish style baits generally have a much thinner and more aerodynamic body to them. They punch through smaller holes and tighter cover much better than anything. On the end, they'll have a couple flaps, a couple little appendages, but not a lot. Just a little bit of motion on there. But they can get into areas that the other baits just can't. And definitely with much less weight. I call these the craw baits. They look just like crawfish. You can see by the design of that bait, it is designed to punch through and not get caught on anything. Very sleek, very dynamic, like a little torpedo designed to punch right through everything. A lot of people refer to them as punch baits, but almost every punch bait looks like a crayfish to me, so I call them my craw baits. Those craw baits are designed for heavy cover. When you're punching through thick mats and very heavy, thick, gnarly cover, that's where I reach for my craw baits. Let's get to flipping again here. Got my why not tied back on. It cuts through that cover so much better. It actually punches down and, and gets down to the bottom, penetrates through it. Far less action on this bait than, than there was on those beaver baits, which I love for most situations. But this one today, this has proved to be the perfect weight, size, profile, everything to get to where the fish actually are which is a little bit deeper in the cover. Yep, there's another one. Oh God, giant, another big one guys. Another giant, big, oh my God. Oh my God, this thing's huge. Oh my Lord, holy crap, holy crap, holy crap, holy crap, we just caught a giant. An absolute giant. The biggest fish. Oh, oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh, holy crap. Holy crap. Guys. Oh my god. Absolute giant. Flipping the game, but why not? And I just caught an absolute freaking stud. Oh my god. Holy cow, guys. Look at the size of that bass. Oh my god. Guys, this is just incredible. I just picked up a giant, giant, giant fish. Oh, seven, seven pounds, one ounce. Seven pound, one ounce. Man, I thought he was bigger than that. Oh my God, like that is just incredible. What a giant beast. What a giant beast. 24 inches long, 24 inches long, huge girth. Oh my goodness. Oh my God. Wow, seven pound beast flipping. Look at that mammoth fish. Wow, <laughs> that is a stud. That is a huge fish, huge fish. Guys, that is flipping right there. I figured it out and this is why. There it is right there, guys. Whoo, there she goes. <laughs> Look at that, look at that. And the sun is just about to go down and we just nailed a giant pig. But my Lord, was it worth it to flip? I played with different weights. I played with different lures, different size hooks, all sorts of things till I found that proper combination of weight and profile of bait that was able to punch through this kind of cover. And sure enough, watching my line, I saw that little tick and we got ourselves an absolute giant. What an amazing, amazing thing. Flipping, baby. I can't prove it to you any better than that. One of the best ways, if not the best way, to target big bass 
flipping heavy cover with small creature baits that's it that's all there is to it flipping pitching punching call it what you want all i know is it caught me a giant bass and i am a huge fan of the technique now guys i really hope you enjoyed this and i hope you learned a little something if you did make sure you smash the heck out of that like button but most importantly guys subscribe to that channel and if you're already subscribed stay subscribed because there's plenty more coming just like this i'm flipping pitching punching and catching hogs i'm captain mikey signing out the future is bright you keep those lines tight <laughs>